So myself, Prabhu Ranjan Kashari. I am actually working on uh, this uh, power quality and converter. <coughs> actually, power quality is a very simple thing nowadays. Everybody knows this one. But myself, I know very little bit thing. So I try to <coughs> make you understood what I have learned. So what is the power quality actually? The term is very simple but very difficult. Is it correct? Mina? Am I audible to last one? Yes. Okay. So, uh, these equations, expressions, everybody knows, right? I think picture is also known to all of you. So, why this power plate and what is the problem? The main problem, as you know that, if you see this picture, this glass, I think this is a reality, right? Isn't it? So, this portion is there. but it is not for you what is called a uh, real thing right but it is there okay without this you can't <coughs> imagine that this is the whole class right so powerfully actually stressing that uh, to reduce this one so that whatever the utility i mean to say utility whenever i will mix sometimes uh, utility ac line line right that is from gen uh, generation side actually who are providing the electricity so often it is <coughs> saying that these rare portions we need to reduce it so that we can utilize this blue portion more right? but uh, in practically it is not happening uh, without this you can realize the whole glass so over here the power equation c it is written <coughs> something like this it is in general we know everybody from hopefully from class 2 12 standard what is s nowadays but this is coming in our <coughs> scenario when we are uh, growing and when we are studying that thing so what is d this is the portion of that thing right the distortions now what is the distortions the distortions are due to the appliances I means whatever appliances we are going to use nowadays nowadays your cell phone is one device which is also creating problem hmm? every time you are going to home and going to recharge it and then suddenly your switch off your charger so that is one kind of non-linear thing so this voltage TSD, current TSD, those are coming in your scenario and it is hampering home it is hampering the utility so i think uh, this graph don't need to explain more only the little thing is the distortion factor is new and distortion factor is there so the term actually uh, in different people define it in different way or a different way the IEEE people is uh, there is some one definitions and the industry sectors there is another definition so industry sector this power quality is very much essential why it is essential because they want the voltage profile should be should be there should not be any deviations in voltage profile whenever you say the voltage profile voltage profile V at an angle of something so there should be a matter right? I will see few pictures that <coughs> what it matters for your industry seg uh, segment but ultimately what are the definitions we learn in our book we learn in our classroom is that the deviations of your voltage and current waveform from its actual thing right so that is called a problem of power power quality but often we see that uh, it is dealing with only voltage yeah. maximum time it is dealing with the voltage but we will see uh, voltage like uh, when this light is going to be due you will say that voltage drop Right, voltage. So often it is saying this is a voltage quality problem, power quality. 
and these are some important factors uh, I have taken uh, from <coughs> uh, very long. Uh, it is some research from US that this one picture from some industry there is some belt conveyor belt right so over here see it is written that one glass band has only five cycle interruption you see the interruptions half a cycle five seconds uh, 0.3 seconds one second so this is not visible like you are studying electrical engineering i think you don't visualize the flux isn't it but it is there main thing is the flux but you are unable to visualize it so over here also this power quality problem is very for microseconds, seconds, uh, three minutes, like this. So what is the hampering? Hampering, see the industry over here 2 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 5 lakhs, uh, uh, 50 thousands like this. Over here, see, there is a 10 million a year. The automaker has momentary interruptions. So I will come to this momentary is what? In, in terms of time, momentary. Momentary interruptions, temporary, those are the interruption actually. Those are the interruption of the problem for a very short duration of time. But this is the <coughs> impact. See, a, a computer center for two second interruptions, they are something say, if you say for Indian group, you say six lakhs is the problem, right? Per incidence or maybe so, a per annum like that. So it is rather than our domestic, domestic also, the industry has some very serious about this quality of power. So this is one example of that. Now there is some common disturbances, these common disturbances, uh, uh, there is few name is written. So rather than these few names, there is other things also there. Uh, uh, the sex, well, momentary interruption, transients, unbalance, harmonics and voltage fluctuations, rather than there is some power variations, uh, power frequency variations, uh, uh, there is some notch, noise, interharmonics. So these are all the problems and those problems actually created by whom this created by us, right? the loading sector. The loading sector is the main cause to initiate that problem and that problem should be encountered by utility. Mm -hmm. Utility because in industry they will not buy a power which is not up to that mark. Otherwise see what is the differences over there. There is a financial loss. So you need to compensate those financial loss. You need to overcome those financial loss. So that's why always it is necessary to have the quality of voltage should be up to the mark. Otherwise, they will not take power from you. So, uh, <coughs> these are the uh, few pictures about how they are going to initiate and what is the solutions in utility side and also in consumer side. Uh, these are the uh, well-known research. So, these are this I think all everybody knows what is voltage deep actually. Voltage deep is this one. See, there is some deep over there. That is voltage deep. Now, what is the possible cause? Cause is written over there. Hmm. Now, utility side there is a voltage restorer, and in the consumer side there is some uh, UPS and line conditioners is there, right? Now, whichever will be suitable for what situation? It depends on your situation. Means it depends on your scenario that uh, why we need to connect those devices so that. I can uh, get rid of this one, right? So this is from the uh, supplier side, and this is from uh, the end point. Now, same as this uh, over voltage. These actually say these few cycles, right? These are few cycles, and it actually it is reducing how much? It is saying it is anything less than uh, ninety percent of your up to the mark. Means if you say the one power unit of some voltage. And if it is coming to 0.9 power unit, it means there is some dip. Mm? And it is going to last for a very short duration. See, some cycles, half cycles, one cycle, like that. Very short period of time. Same thing for your over voltage also over here. This is called voltage swell actually. Voltage swell. This is also for very few cycles, but it is going to from one power unit to 1.1, 1.2, like that. Mm? So lasting duration is very less. But impact you see the other slides what is the impact of those and interruptions i think uh, uh, there is an interruption this is called the interruption means uh, there is no any supply right there is no any supply though it is connected to the supply but supply is not there that is for also few very few seconds i think uh, interruption and outage those who are power system people know what is outage there is slight difference between outage and interruptions Outage means what? Anybody? 
outage you can heard about the blackout right that is outage system is there supply is there but due to some malfunctioning your supply is not coming to consumer end that is called outage and it is bigger so it is little bit like interruption also same is so everything is there but suddenly the power is off for a very short duration of time so that is interruptions and this transient everybody knows what is transient this is main cause for this transient is lighting the main cause is saying that lighting and the switch switching utility switching because nowadays there is so many power converter devices coming and every time the switching is happening so transients you can see in your oscilloscope also right because maximum time you are doing not doing correct practical so oscilloscope will come and these are the harmonic distortions this is harmonic distortion see there is some distortion i show you an example of this harmonic distortions in the voltage side why it is initiated the voltage side and these are the noises right in the positive half cycle and negative half cycle these are the noises and this is mainly due to the improper grounding so every time you see the filter city condenser dynamic voltage resistor is there and this is the line condition of the filter is in the consumer end and this is the source from where i have taken this uh, these two slides now these are again few waveform i have uh, listed over here this slide for you showing the waveform the first main cause we know this is the reactive power this is in general reactive power this is a harmonics voltage initiates because of what i come to that why the harmonics is initiated over there this is a network in unbalance so network unbalance means phase loads phase to phase load or phase to ground loads like that our unbalance this our in our building this building also unbalanced loading is there unbalanced voltage is there right unbalanced voltage if you if you correctly see in your home there is also unbalancing because i have seen in my home there is a 250 250 volt in the morning right at 5 at 6 it is 250 volt but when you go past by time 8 it will be 230 volt right so that may be some that is also voltage imbalance and problem in our this building also some voltage problem right in phase a phase b phase c if you see this is not coming to 230 volt mm. it, that is mainly due to uh, why i don't know but one thing is that loading is one important thing if you connect all loads in a single phase roib r phase then there is some imbalance created so that is actually that is network b due to that your network is going to be unbalanced so again this transient is coming and there is some transients has uh, categories one category is impulsive and another is oscillatory uh, what is impulsive one impulsive one is uh, this one is impulsive uh, there is some rating is given see over here there is some rating is given uh, 1.2 by 50 microseconds right 4000 4000 volt is so that is due to the lighting and why it is happening basically the voltage is reaching to 4000 volt with only 1.2 microseconds suddenly so there is some spike suddenly but when it is going to reduce it is reducing to its half a value means 4000 it is coming to 2000 value and it's taking time 50 second so that is called a impulsive transient right impulsive transient and oscillatory so what oscillatory actually it is even in a positive polarity and negative polarity it is even some like that notch mm -hmm. it is even so that is oscillatory it is uh, everywhere uh, this cycle also this cycle also it is going to be present uh, represent that is called oscillatory but the other thing is that impulsive one right and what is the reason see everywhere there is some reasons of uh, uh, switching on switching off uh, your uh, inductive capacitive all these things so that is called a voltage variation see this is a voltage variation you can you can relate it with your uh, sag and swell and this is a, a flicker flicker is continuous variations of your voltage there may be uh, uneven magnitude will be there uneven magnitude of your voltage will be there so that is a, a repetitive variations of a voltage and these are the few cause why this is this is the means electric arc furnaces welding all these things and this is in general the oscillations right it is changing direction periodically so that is these are see some name i can say there's some category name of your power quality problems and that is related to your voltage so harmonics uh, harmonics everybody know what is a harmonics and main thing for harmonics is what is renewable energy is also 
creating harmonics in your system, right? Renewable energy and renewable energy is when you interface of those, you require converters. So they are the one. Uh, these are also non-linear things. So uh, whatever non-linear things you are going to interact with your system, so it will initiate the harmonics in the system. See, there is some category of that uh, general technology. General technology over here means over here is what actually wind, solar, and all these things coming in the general technology, right? Wind. Uh, so over here into interface those generation you need to bring to your utility so by bringing that you need to have a steady converter means solid state device is there so due to that that harmonics is creating and dynamic gravity power compensation means uh, 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 that is the dynamic nature of your system right because you don't have any control in your load there is only uh, when you are going to switch off the load when you are going to switch on your load and nobody knows and these are the uh, cables due to uh, wind energy. There are some, see, some cables are there, and that cables is the long cables, and they make it some uh, resonance in the system. So that is also initiating to the your voltage source utility, some harmonics. And over here, see, electric utility impedance is itself is a problematic thing. Impedance over here, meaning is what impedance means. That impedance actually, uh, relation between your supply side and load side and load is going to be changing so obviously this grid impedance is going to be changing so that's why this grid it is saying the grid itself is a initiator of harmonics so uh, this table actually categorically for your voltage harmonics limits and it is there is a we know all of you know that i typically stand that for voltage harmonics uh, for different level of voltages so it is changing from 2014. Earlier it was 519-1992. Now it is 519-2014. There is some slight deviations. All are same. Only few things is going to be added over there in from 2014. Over here, see uh, this red mark one. This one. Earlier it was not there in 1992. Uh, earlier 1992 it was starting from 0 to 69 up to up to 69 kb was there. Mm, five and eight for not 5, 3 and 5 mm. up to 69 but over here they have uh, taken one limit over there see up to 1 kV up to 1 kV it is individual harmonics is 5 and THD will be 8 percent mm. that is the new from 2014 onwards so this is for this is the different voltage level and this is the limits of your harmonic distortion and same thing for your current harmonics also in current what is it doing uh, current also uh, earlier this is uh, less than uh, 50 now they have given less than see, sorry there is a mistake there c should not be there right uh, less than 225 so this table the uh, red mark one is the new one it is in uh, it is uh, incorporated in 2014 earlier in 1992 it was not there it was not there and there is some uh, though there the value is going to be changing see this value is going to be changing and over here in individual harmonic order the order earlier it was 35 sorry uh, uh, below 30 uh, 35 only now they have given category 135 to 50 so 50 is coming new for 2014 so these are the uh, voltage and current harmonics new table if you are going to make some converter if you are going to uh, work on that you need to keep in mind that there are harmonics limits according to this 519 so this rectifier everybody knows now this rectifiers how it is initiating the problem for your uh, utility so over here see this capacitor actually, this inductor and capacitor actually the main thing of electrical engineering, right? But we want a resistive nature of our system, which is not possible. So that's why this very beginning slide, there is a coffee cup, isn't it? So it, 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 we are able to make it as a resistive in nature. See, capacitor is playing over here, the role. Now, that is the voltage is going to be supplied this utility. That voltage is going to supply that utility. This capacitor current is, see, this capacitor current is up to this much because this much is required, this current is drawing from supply. 
whenever the capacitor voltage is equal to this voltage it is not drawing any current from the utility isn't it it is going to take current from this portion to this portion this portion to this portion so this is the nature of current of your from source side now if you see what is the voltage voltage will be the say for time being if you say the voltage will be the sinusoidal in nature and current is it is delivering is this is the nature of current so what will happen if you go for power factor for this utility it will be very low graded power factor it is going to be operating and it, this is due to what this is due to this one right so that type of power is industry is not require that type of power so you need to keep it mind that you should have a good utility supply so for that that utility you need to do something so that their current should be in sinusoidal in nature but due to this load it is not happening this is a spike you see spike current is happening so this is a perfect example for non linear load why the harmonics and all these things is initiated in your system so see due to that this is the supply voltage there is some distortion in supply voltage so the variation is coming in your supply voltage not only in current but also in voltage so we are the load is the main initiator for those problems now in industry side there is some <coughs> segment where uh, you need to have a means a compact voltage a compact power quality they are very severely uh, problematic this is a program uh, program a logic circuit this is one picture i have taken uh, collected this is automated data processors automated data processor is this one see this is like a, a conveyor belt on these things uh, it is require a a, a a supply which should be constant in nature right uh, for this operation because if there is a malfunction is happening this is going to be stop it may be your glass making it may be your uh, cold drink bottle it may be your something else right so this is just an example so they require a uh, very good power quality and this is the adjustable speed drive speed drive is actually a uh, what uh, we this is a drive system totally uh, that drive system that drive system also require you good quality of voltage and power right otherwise the driving systems is not going to be work properly because your all power generation and speed control is going to be hampered mm -hmm. hampered so the maximum things are going to be utilized by the industry sector and they require up to that quality right quality because i heard in our uh, uh, we have a uh, press making segment in our uh, agartala so they often encountered with the voltage problem right 255 voltage 250 voltage is there so there i have heard that one story that their cmd has written to electricity cmd about this when he, he has written or he has written verbally uh, complaining verbally but nobody is coming so after that he has taken some knowledge from some expert that what is the problem with the voltage yeah. and the, they have a some processing mechanism right they they need to printing press there is some processing mechanism is there so they require a very quality up to the mark quality voltage otherwise they are going to malfunction yeah. so when he is verbally interacting with the engineer it is not responding after that when he has collecting the Information data about this. What should be the voltage and what should be the because they are not technical person, right? So I have collected and then written complaint. Then not once engineer, the three and four engineers coming and immediately the same thing is happening, right? So the utility means those who are operating in the uh, say manufacturing area, if they don't know the exact uh, technical terms about the voltage current, so it will impacting the your equipment so once if you raise the questions so electrical engineers and technical person should immediately act on that so uh, the hampering we have seen in our last very beginning slides that what is the hampering about this disturbances now coming to the short very volt uh, duration voltage variations so these are the category right this is the actually category means this classifications of this deep voltage up and this interruptions they are based on the short duration voltage variation why this short duration voltage variations because of these timings this instantaneous timings is 0.5 to 30 cycles right it is not visible uh, you can realize that momentary 30 cycles to 3 seconds you can this is up to 
little bit higher up than instantaneous then there is some temporary 3 seconds to 1 minute so they up to 1 minute you, uh, you see up to 1 minute all are, all are short duration voltage which 1 minute is too much hmm. normally they are in seconds only so the diffs uh, the voltage swell and interruption these are the 3 things coming under short duration voltage variations Now, long duration voltage variation, long duration voltage variation little bit similar to your this voltage deep and swell. Only the thing, thing is that uh, they are longer than one minute, longer than one minute. And I have uh, given two picture over here. This is one in a very huge inductive load and there is some uh, capacitor bank. Uh, these two things are the main initiator for this long duration voltage variations. Uh, what is the nature? Nature is that suddenly it is going to be off and suddenly it is going to be a, a on. Uh, so sudden on and off of your inductive load and sudden on and off your capacitive load is the main initiator for this under voltage and over voltage. Uh, and they are longer duration so that's why otherwise they will come to your uh, voltage swell and sec category if it is for a very short period of time. Mm. So, so these are the main cause. So, to understood that those the those like slides actually based on your power quality problems, power quality problems. So we need to address those power quality problems. So first we need to understood uh, the system. The our electrical system is mainly the two things. One is in generating sessions, right? If you if you segment main two segments, one is the initiator, and another is the consumer. Two things. So I understood how I understood. I understood means. I try to understood this as a generator or as a receiver or it may be a generator, it may be a receiver, two sides. Hmm. Electrical energy, if you remember that electrical main, main uh, very huge and a type of energy is generated by rotating, right? And huge consumer also the rotation. So if rotation and rotation is there, there is no problem. But in between rotation, there is so many things is coming, isn't it? Your mobile phone is not a rotation, right? your PC is not a rotation. So those things are coming. That's why the all this problem is happening. So first we am going to very basic. I think all of you know this one. Still I try to whatever I understood I try to explain in front of you. So in this two machine model this is the voltage for this voltage and this is the voltage for this one. And this is two segment. Right, two segment. We have we have overloaded the capacitor. Why well, we have overloaded the capacitor? I think you know, right? Because of this uh, long span, right? Which is this for short span. So we have overloaded the capacitor. Now there is one new thing is the midpoint voltage. So this is the midpoint voltage. Hmm? Midpoint voltage. We try to understand that thing is that the voltage is going to traveling. Actually, the power flow means what? The flow of current, isn't it? Whatever you require, you require power. Power means what? You require current. Current means what? Will come from here. So this current will flow through this path and coming here. So in between there is so many points. This is quarter point. This is more than that, right? So we have divided with the midpoint. So this is called midpoint voltage. So midpoint voltage is this one, the midpoint voltage. V1 plus V2 by 2. So this is coming midpoint voltage. I have, I may make some. Uh, Expression mistake, see delta by 2 delta and something, you please make it correct. Huh? If you do the whole derivations, it will going to be corrected. In somewhere, I miss something. So, this is the line current, I equal to 2V by X sine delta. So, the line current is flowing. Line current will uh, form, we will say this is a flow of power. We try to understand this is a flow of power, flow of current. So, what is the active power? Active power, the expression is this one, V square by X sine delta. So, this is same thing whatever you have derived in your uh, power system classes same thing so p equal to v square by x sine delta hmm. so the flow of power will depends on this v we assume that v is what uh, we have seen in our power system class this v1 should be equal to v2 we have understood that so that's why this v square is coming with derived in such a fashion so it is derived from this midpoint so v1 minus v2 by jx uh, it is v square by x sine delta so this is the active power and reactive power is q1 q1 is over here and this is minus q2 is over there so minus sign i think you can understood uh, 
uh, if we take from q2 that should be minus q1 that's all nothing else or uh, this is the v square by x 1 minus cos delta so this is q this is p and we are dealing with power quality so the power should be whatever power is generating over here that should be come over there that is our main motto so that's why we study power quality is nothing about we have seen in the first class uh, sorry first slide that we need to reduce that red portions right red portion that is our main motto so trying to do that we have seen all those expressions those expressions and we try to understood via this graph uh, this phasor we can say that uh, what is impact of midpoint voltage line current and power with angle i think this angle is is it visible that angle that angle is between v1 and v2 sometimes you have written uh, in synchronous generator e1 and v1 right or e or v so that is called a power angle isn't it you know all of you that is power angle volt means angle between this and this something you need to take a reference so if there is a generation initiations over there so that we will take this is a zero and this is lagging leading or in phase with some that one. so what is our main motto our main motto should be is that uh, whatever you are generating in the generating side the same thing will receive over there right but it is not happening so that's why some angle is there say so this is a delta angle we'll say this is a power angle now say <coughs> the same thing i have represented over there this v1 v2 in between this is inductor that is called a line inductor mm, line inductor and this is a two portion now we try to uh, <coughs> understood this is v1 this is drop across this inductor drop across this inductor this is two portions and this is v2 and the i is the line current which is traveling from this side to that side so that is the line current it is traveling now all these things are given over there the first thing this delta one delta one is uh, are you getting that one are you visible is it visible huh? yeah okay so this is the delta one so this is v1 and this is v2 this is the first case hmm? when delta one now delta two is what delta two is little bit increasing from delta one hmm? i have not written over there delta one or uh, delta two should be greater than delta one so it is increasing nature so that is increasing in nature now if delta is increase what will happen your power is going to be increase p equal to v square by x sin delta it is obviously so p is a variable or p is a quantity which is depends on v your x and your delta three things isn't it three things x is the impedance you can say v is your generator voltage and delta how they are aligned isn't it so if we able to control these three things we can able to control the flow of current i indirectly we are actually controlling the power mm, that's the main motto so the first thing we learn that just increase the delta so power is going to be increase so if we increase the delta obviously what the current see current vector is where first case this is the current vector right this is the current first case and second thing current is over there so due to the increase of delta current is increasing uh, current is increasing from i1 to i2 current is increase uh, this i is given for making you understood the axis uh, the uh, the green one actually the impact of delta 1 and delta 2 i1 and i2 uh, similarly your voltage vm uh, your vm actually the first vm is this one and second vm is this one this blue line represents your midpoint voltage this is v1 and this is v2 so this is v1 and this is v2 delta is increasing your current is increasing but your vm is going to be decreasing right but vm is playing a role in power flow huh? for time being it is not a problem because i is so much increasing that power is actually increasing it is no problem the problem starts when if delta is going to be like that this is v1 and this is v2 so delta is what 180 degrees going there right going there what should be the current at that time current is also going to be increased now it is increased in such a fashion that you are unable to measure it 
isn't it? You are unable to measure that current. So that current we can say this is infinite in positive side infinite. So my power should be also infinite. So are you able to deal with that infinite power? But simultaneously it is not infinite. If you see the Vm, where the Vm is going, it is going to zero. The midpoint voltage is going to be zero. So if midpoint voltage is zero, ultimately power is zero. So this graph actually, uh, and this is the drop actually. See, this is the first drop, second drop, and this is the third portion. The drop is increasing, Vm is decreasing, I is increasing, power is not increasing. Power is increasing up to some level. After that, it is not going to be increased. And if you if you refer only voltage, as you have deal that power quality is normally dealing with the voltage quality. If you deal with the voltage, so voltage is zero, power is zero. So this delta is not going to ensure us. That whether the if you increase the delta, the power is always going to be increased. No, it is not like that. Actually, uh, uh, at least this figure tells us like that that your midpoint voltage is actually going to be zero. So power is not increasing. So that's why <coughs> our main intention is that to keep the voltage profile throughout the line. So that's why I am. Uh, the, we need to keep your voltage profile throughout the line because this is just only a point of midpoint voltage. Voltage is there, 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 there are so many segments. You can make it 10 segments. So you can find 10 voltage V1 to V10. So our main motto is to keep that voltage intact so that my power quality should be up to that mark. But the discussions is saying that uh, if you increase only delta, uh, it is not possible. So we need to do something else to make it intact uh, to make it uh, up to that mark so that's why some device is coming for resolving these pq issues hmm. pq issues so uh, still now we are in a power quality issues you have seen now some devices will see hmm. how we can address that uh, issues so fast devices uh, the variable impedance and second device is switching converter time Variable impedance, how from where it is coming? Variable impedance because the long earlier, earlier we actually to improve the quality of power, we are uh, just addressing the power factor. So, improve the power factor, we are going for over excited synchronous motor. Uh, that is the older thing, right? Older days, seeing over excited synchronous motor, liking uh, nothing about your synchronous condenser, isn't it? Synchronous condenser. So, what is synchronous condenser? Usually, actually giving you a leading current, IC leading current, isn't it? Am I wrong? Are you getting anything or not from that? Huh? Excitations field, I see if you go for your synchronous generator. So whatever things we are going to study, that is only a just a generator actually. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are parallelly, you are need to establish a generator so that our voltage should be intact for throughout the line, isn't it? So it is starting from your Synchronous condenser, synchronous condenser, you are going to provide your leading current because what? Because our mainly utility facing all are inductive load mainly, isn't it? Inductive load maximum is if you see inductive load, so we need to address that inductive load. So that's why we require a capacitive current mm, addressing that. So from the synchronous condenser, it is providing only a leading current. So variable impedance, variable impedance means what? If you go back to your equation this x so variable impedance means attacking this x attacking this x means what you need to increase decrease that x if you are going to decrease that x so your p should be going to be increased so indirectly you are actually controlling something so that it, uh, your x and x means what your current i if x is less your more current will going to flow so that, that's why the variable impedance device is coming. So if you start from a synchronous condenser, then synchronous condenser, there is some rotating part and all these things, there is some complexity. So that's why some solid state devices came. The first solid state device is thyristor control reactor. The first device is this thyristor control. It should be reactor, I have written inductor. Ah. Sometimes it is called also thyristor control inductor because you are going to control this inductor. So what is that device? That device, if you see, this is a source and some current is flowing and these are the valve. 
Hmm, these are the valve. These valve actually acting in such a fashion that they are going to contour this IL. I am not going to details on that. I think you can understood this. If this switch operating in such a fashion that IL alpha equal to zero, no current is going to flow. No current is going to flow means no inductive effect in the system. You can also make this bulb operating in such a fashion that there is a min maximum inductive effect is coming to that source. Right? You can do it because the control of this bulb is in your hand by your signal, gate signal. So for time being you make uh, say uh, if we if we increase uh, if we increase this inductive nature means more inductive current will flow if it is zero zero current will flow no inductive nature no inductive but uh, by doing that what you are actually uh, providing you are providing some inductive current to flow inductive current to flow means axle will be there. So after that there is some another device is coming that is called thyristor switch capacitor. Instead of this inductor there is a capacitor means directly you are applying IC to the system hmm? directly. So if more current is flowing through that it should be IC. I have made, uh, done a mistake over there. That should be I suppose uh, subscript C alpha. So that is the alpha going and alpha is what alpha is actually delay angle you are going to control. So that this current is uh, going to be controlled. So it may be zero, it may be maximum. So you are going to give a maximum capacitive current to the system or minimum capacitive current to the system. So these are the uh, variable impedance you are going to vary actually the firing angle and indirectly you are varying the impedance of the system and ultimately the current is variable in nature. Okay. And uh, there is this is a thyristor switch capacitor, it is called a thyristor switch capacitor, but this circuit has some problem. Uh, what is the problem that circuit? Can anybody tell what is the problem with the circuit? I, I told, uh, I actually forgot to mention that. One problem will be the circuit. If you deal, uh, suppose this capacitor, this is V sub C. So that V sub C, uh, because that capacitor is a uh, dynamic component, we know this is an energy storage component. So it can store energy, right? Every problem is these two, L and C, and they are very simple, not, not very simple actually. They are really very tough. Right? In electrical engineering, if you see from starting from synchronous generator to electrical machine uh, transformer, the equivalent circuit is comprised, uh, comprised of this L and C and R, right? So beyond that RLC, we are nothing, at, at least electrical engineers. So as they are a storing component, they are called a dynamic component, they can store energy. So that storing energy is actually creating problem for this source. How? Not this source, sorry. For this bulb. So those bulbs have some rating, isn't it? So within this limit, you can utilize those bulbs. Otherwise, uh, there is some great problem. What problem? The first problem is that if you see, you have a simple circuit and the capacitor voltage, this voltage is equal to that supply voltage. Means suppose you have applied a 10 volt and it is earlier stored at 10 volt. So what will happen? <coughs> at that time, the current tries to go in steady state level within a short period of time. Right, within a short period of time means uh, if you see this if you're going to turn on if you're going to turn on this one this current is going to jump if capacitor voltage is equal to that supply voltage if it is 10 volt if it is 10 volt so very short duration of time the current is going to be steady state and that stress cannot handle by this one this is one thing Another thing is that if this capacitor doesn't have any voltage in it, means there is no any storage voltage, residual voltage or you can say energy, it is totally uh, in relaxed mode. So what will happen if it is relaxed mode, if you see this is just a single line, if you say this is a short head, so this voltage 
will supply a current which is a V by something. V by something means what? Very infinite amount of current will flow. Right? If it is zero voltage, very infinite amount of current will flow through this bulb, and that too also those bulb is unable to withstand. So the problem, the first problem is if it is this V C equal to V, and if V C equal to zero, every time there is some problem. From home. For this bulb, so there's a some protective device you need to incorporate in your circuit so that uh, it is operating as a thyristor switch capacitor. So that is a charge reactor. So uh, the complete circuit is this one. This is the complete circuit of your thyristor switch capacitor because this is a current limiting reactor. It is called. So current limiting reactor is required for the thyristor switch capacitor. capacitor. Otherwise, those bulb is unable to withstand that uh, scenario. So after that, uh, there is one thyristor switch series capacitor. Uh, this is a thyristor switch series capacitor. Uh, so what you see, this capacitor actually bypass through this bulb. This is also bypass through this bulb. So what will happen? You require some amount of capacitive current or capacitor uh, means uh, reactive capacitive reactive current. So, sorry. Uh, Uh, voltage. This is a, some voltage. VC you require. This is VC one, VC two. Similarly, you can have so many devices. VC three, VC four. So what will happen? Your voltage is going to be improved. Mm, if you have a one to ten number of these devices, I have written over here one to n. So there is a ten number of devices. So you can have a if they are operating in full mode because it may be operating for a half cycle. It may be operating for full cycle also. It is up to you. How much you are going to Operate right out of 180 degrees. Suppose it is operating only for 10 degree. Uh, it is also operating for say 50 degree like that. Uh, it is up to you. So we will assume that it is operating fully. So full capacity voltage is represented throughout the line. So suppose you require only 10 bar, 10 device you need to connect. But what happens? Suppose uh, this voltage. Capacity voltage provided by this thyristor switch series capacitor is uh, a step-like manner. Step-like manner means what? It may be two volt, then four volt, then six volt like that. Uh, in between, if you require something, suppose uh, I require a 10 bar capacity, eight uh, bar, or say nine bar at that time. My requirement is nine bar, but whatever the device I have available, there should be 10 bar. So at that time, there is some problem with this thyristor switch series capacitor because whatever you provide two bar, two bar. If five devices there, ten bar will be there, but you are unable to come to nine bar because one bar is uh, less requirement compared to your number of available device. So at that time there is some complexity will come to switch on this because again the controlling uh, circuit will tell that uh, you need to uh, you you need to change your fire angle up to that. So to overcome this problem, uh, there is some device coming. This is the device. This device is initiated by an Indian, right? His name is John J. Vitadil. He is from Kerala. Hmm. So this device actually initiated by him, uh, uh, invented by him, uh, hopefully in 1980 something, 80 or 85. 85. His name is John J. Vitadil, and the device name is uh, Rapid Adjustment of Network Impedance. Network impedance means uh, the combination of X, L, and X, C, right? So whatever problem we have seen with this earlier device, so that is sorted out by these connections, this inductor actually. Now you are providing the capacitor, but the capacitor current is not the fixed one. Hmm. This current, the flow of this current, this current has two paths. This is one path. This is another path, right? Another path. So this is acting. This thyristor switch capacitor. If you say this is a what? This is thyristor control reactor. The whole part is thyristor to control reactor. Connected across a capacitor, but this bulb actually controlling this flow of current and that flow of current both simultaneously. Mm, simultaneously, because you see two parallel path, two parallel path. So based on their impedance, the current is going to flow. If you cut off one path, it the whole current will flow through other path. Same thing is over here. If you cut off one path, the whole current will flow through this, flow through this. So full capacitive effect you can have in your circuit. But that thing is not happening. Why? Because 
this control inductor will play a role. So, <coughs> the thing is that suppose your VC, your VC have some voltage and suddenly, uh, you suppose if some VC has some 10 volt in the negative side and this switch is off, so what will happen? When this switch is off, the current will flow through this capacitor and it is charging the capacitor, capacitor will charge itself, so capacitor voltage is going to build up, build up. So suddenly if you are going to switch on this one, so what will happen? The current direction is going to be, so voltage build up after this capacitor is going to be changed. Why? Because some current, this voltage, some current will flow through this device and it will come over here and this current and this current will add it up. So what will happen? I equal to I will become I plus I L alpha. So the current magnitude is increased and it is rapidly decreasing this capacitor voltage in other direction. Suppose if it is a negative direction capacitor voltage and some current when is going to on this one, the current will come, current is going to add it up. So the negative nature of this voltage VC will directly, uh, uh, it will start, it will start decreasing uh, or what is called discharging very fast. So that is uh, the dynamic nature of this. I am not going to the dynamic nature of this. The, for time being, uh, for the easier underst understanding is that, suppose I require a 10 bar capacitive. Now I require a 9 bar. So you just control this thyristor control reactor angle, firing angle. So it will provide additional 1 bar. That is the main thing. It will going to provide additional 1 inductive bar. So from 10 capacity bar, 1 inductive bar will be there. So it will automatically become total 9 bar. So that is called a automatic control of your bar. The capacitive nature is also there, inductive nature is also so there. So this is a little bit <coughs> advanced compared to the thyristor switch capacitor. Now coming to your next device is your, uh, what we have discussed? We have discussed up to the variable impedance type. Now the switching converter. So in switching converter, uh, the first thing is this one. Uh, this is a uh, bidirectional converter. So this is the basic of your switching converter. Ultimately, this is nothing about your uh, uh, a full bridge converter. This is a single leg. It is shown over here a single leg. So this side is DC and this side is AC. So current can flow from both sides, either side, right? Either side. So this current can flow this one, current can flow this side also. So this is one, is this turn out devices, this is diode. So diode is mainly responsible for bringing current from AC side to DC side and turn out device from DC side to AC side. So that is the main functions, nothing else. This is a very simple thing, very simple, but doing that simple work, it is <coughs> providing so many things. We will see that. So, this is the VA at that point. AC side, this is a VA, and DC side, there is a plus VD by 2, minus VD by 2. So, we will see, try to understood that with a graph. So, these are the uh, when this 1 and 4 is conducting, that is inversion, when 1 dot and 4 dot is conducting, that is rectification. That is a simple thing. Inversion and rectification, inverter and rectifier operating simultaneously. Now, uh, uh, is it visible? Uh, this uh, graph, uh, okay, visible. So if it is visible, or this is visible, which one is better? This one is visible. I'll try it from this one. Huh? This one. What is the angle? Okay, uh, anyhow I miss one thing, uh, we will try to understood from this graph, 
the operation of this uh, converter but okay okay say uh, while this v is these directions and i is these directions it is operating in inverter and unity power factor so unity power factor in mode huh? and v is here i is here so at that time if you see this graph actually the vd that should be vd by 2 plus vd by 2 this is minus vd by 2 i have done a mistake over there it should be plus vd by 2 minus vd by 2 and this waveform is current waveform This waveform is a current waveform. Now, when one, one is conduct, uh, conducting and four is conducting, so means what? One and four. One and four means current is coming from this side, right? Four current is coming from this side means uh, from AC side to DC side. So see, this V A direction is here and I direction is here. We keep I as a reference. Hmm? I as a reference and voltage is going to be changing hmm. voltage angle compared to current is going to be changing so at second point here there is some delay VA by 60 degree hmm. voltage delay by 60 degree so delay of 60 degree how we can understood we can have a control of this turn off devices in our hand with the gate pulse right so we can make it delay Right, suppose 0 degree it is full conduction. Now 60 degree there is not full, co full conduction, right? Full conduction. So what is there from inverter side means from this side the current has some control. The current control means what this total bulb has some control of current. Total bulb control of current. So when there is some 60 degree delay, so what will happen? the VA is coming to there, I will be fixed, eh? every time I is a reference, I is fixed, V will be here. Now see, due to this VA, what is happening? The current is remaining same, the voltage, this is the voltage earlier, 1 is conducting, 4 is conducting, no problem. Now, this voltage is going to there, because of the VA, delay by VA, and see these portions, because at that time, the 4, turn on device 4 is not, this 4 is not going to be switch on, it is going to be switch on, it is going to be switch on, right, but it is unable to conduct that current. So this portion, this portion of current will be flow through by this one, this one dot is a diode, one is a turn on device, a IGBT. So what will happen, this portion of current actually flow through by diode. Now one diode is there means what, it is coming, the uh, current is coming from AC side to DC side. Right? After that this portion, the whole portion is carried by 4. So that is inverter, from AC side to DC side this portion is carried. Now coming back to over here. This is negative going, so 4 is going to turn off, it is unable to carry the current, this current, but the voltage is still it is in the negative side. 4 is turn off over here, voltage is still negative side, this current is unable to flow through this 4, so this current is flowing through this, this diode. So what is happening? This is rectification, this is inversion, this is also rectification, this is very less, but this is a, uh, this portion is a little bit higher to that. So at that time, what we can say, the VA actually lagging IA by some angle and it is inverter. So that's why you have written at point 2, that is an inductive in nature, but the operation is inverter, because maximum current is coming from DC side to AC side, see maximum current is coming from DC side to AC side and again there is some delay by 30 degree, see this is the delay, so due to that delay this VA is totally perpendicular to IA, right, so it is 90 degree in lagging, if you say 
this is out of phase unity power factor this is lagging still lagging inductive and this is perfectly lagging 90 degree means totally inductive right totally inductive now how the utility sees that device that device actually at point three third positions it is actually nothing about is a inductor because pure inductor can draw a total lagging right total lagging so that's why at that positions it is totally inductive so there is further delay by 60 degree see this is delay by 60 degree so how will happen it was at 90 degree so further delay by 60 degree so how will happen this due to the delay delay nature within this position you see this is 90 degree now it is 30 degree still it is lagging hmm, 30 degree so during that portions if you see the four dot conduction is more one dot conduction is more but one is here and four is here very very little this one this is one and this is four so how will happen the conduction of turn device is very much less conduction of diode is very much more so overall operation is what overall operation is more current from the uh, ac side to dc side not dc to ac because 104 dot is conducting so that is a rectification is more rectification is more but still your va is lagging i by some angle so we can say this is <coughs> rectifier but still inductive it is pure inductor it is rectifier not inverter rectifier because from inverter nature is coming to rectifier nature hmm. so still inductive now again further delay by 90 degree so see this v and i will be same phase and i dot for whole uh, i dot is carrying the whole current four dot also carrying the whole current there is no any conductions by one and four means there is no any igbt involved only diode is involved so only one directions flow of current from ac to dc side so that is called a rectifier and unity power factor motor you can describe that uh, from this point also it will come to that point so that is called a rectifier mode of operations and unity power factor mode so that same inverter i mean you can say the converter is from inverter unity power factor coming to rectifier unity power factor so this is a unity power factor mode in between there is a lagging in nature and after that if you delay by 60 degree more there is some delay by 60 degree more if you see the waveform over there uh, 4 dot still more 1 dot still more 4 is less 1 is less but uh, this is if it is a delay by 60 degree means from unity power factor mode it is coming to a leading mode leading mode what we can say leading mode capacitive in nature right capacitive in nature then again leading by uh, dealing by uh, delay by 30 degree so there will be 90 degree 90 degree you will see this is a pure capacitor this is a pure capacitor this is a leading rectifier this is a rectifier or inverter what you can show you can say this is a half and half half by ID to IGBT and half by diodes so this is actually pure, pure capacitor so at point 0.7 it is pure capacitor at point 0.3 it is pure inductor at point 0.5 it is unity power vector at point 1 it is unity power factor it is inverter it is uh, inverter right so ultimately it is operating a inverter rectifier unity power factor mode inductor capacitor both all right simultaneously so what we require we require a device in our system which is giving our a giving us a leading var so that device is capable to give us a leading var right so this is the operation in four quadrant mode this one this is the operation of four quadrant mode if you see carefully the positions 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 are the va position right va position and this is the current ia ia is fixed so we'll take the reference of ia and if you look carefully from point 1 to point 5 it is lagging right lagging and uh, from point 0.5 to 1 these directions it is 
leading the red one is leading this is lagging hmm? but here from this point 3 point to 5 point it is operating as a what rectifier right rectifier if you see look carefully uh, point 3 is a inductive in nature point 3 this is inductive in nature what is in point 3 this is 90 degree so this is 90 degree inductive and uh, uh, this operations is ending inverter operation is ending and after that point sorry after that point 4 4 4 is rectifier in inductive in nature so this is a rectifier right this is a rectifier and this is a inverter so if you see this quadrant in this quadrant what will be there this is a rectifier lagging and opposite to this quarter what is that it is a inverter hopefully you know it is a uh, high inverter but leading right leading so it can simultaneously give power and receive power so that is the beauty of this bidirectional converter it can it can you can say this is not any source this is just a load purely inductive load or just a purely capacitive load or sometimes it can give you leading bar right if it is purely capacitive means it is giving you leading bar so <coughs> this fourth current mode of operation is possible with this uh, device so the advanced device is a switching converter and uh, this is a switching based device converter and uh, this uh, now whatever i have discussed the same thing this is a ac side this is a dc side now control of p and q right control of p and q uh, this p and q controlling uh, actually done by this one this is a single line diagram this is your generator or say your converter and this is your line this is your line this is your converter so what it will supply it will supply i i equal to what the difference between this potential and this potential and in between this is called a coupling you can say this is the reactance of coupling transformer you can say this is a inductor right whatever you say so there is some transformer required to connect with that hmm. sometimes done uh, inductor is also there so this is the expression for your i and if you say this is in the same reference at 0 degree so that is the i and i is what the difference between v and e and x so that is called a del v now what is what happening you see this is i equal to minus j something minus j means what minus j means some reactive current minus j means some reactive current it may be capacitive current it may be inductive current so ultimately we see from that utility side we see this converter as a inductive current or maybe a capacitive current this tells us right minus j tells us that this is a imaginary part of i so how the reactive power is flowing reactive power is flowing how if v greater than e so it will be minus j now e the v greater than less than e it will be plus j okay plus j so minus j we say that uh, that is inductive in nature and the, the converter is drawing inductive current or it acting as a inverter uh, sorry uh, it is acting as a inverter and case 2 is a plus j uh, plus j means what plus j means this is a capacitive in nature right capacitive in nature plus j so from this case 1 and case 2 we say that the magnitude of i is a variable from 0 to v by x is one and another thing is that this is the nature of i is maybe capacitive maybe inductive and who will decide this v magnitude is decided e is a converter output v is your uh, point of common coupling output a uh, voltage so v over here see e is less e is more when e is more it is delivering when e is less it is receiving and ekt power is depends on that angle now the uh, uh, angle is coming over here this is a generator voltage sorry this is a converter voltage and this is your line voltage so there is some difference earlier whatever you have seen that this is actually zero both are zero only we are dealing with the magnitude not angle it say we oh, will overlook the angle hmm, magnitude so based on the magnitude if v is more it is applying if v is uh, sorry e is more because it is controllable it is not controllable if e is more it is applying if it is less it is receiving and what current j current j means what reactive right 
so for active or this is the angle is coming in place this angle means what this angle see uh, uh this is <coughs> alpha and the uh, expression for this i is coming this cos alpha sin alpha ultimately uh, what is s s is comprised of this minus v by x sin alpha plus j so this is a q and this is a p right so this active power actually depends on that alpha that alpha is a variable one that alpha can go for first quadrant to fourth quadrant uh, second quadrant third quadrant can vary right? so that variable nature actually decide the flow of current i hmm? so this is a minus sign this minus sign of p hmm? minus sign of p uh, means what minus sign of p means this converter supplies to line line over here means the utility you can say bars you can say the grid right while it is minus it is supplying the p and q is plus inductive power supplies by line so long v less than you have seen that so that may be a, a, a positive uh, if alpha is going to change so at that time what will happen converter will receive from line so the expression of q is over here v square by x uh, uh, some derivation is coming like that so ultimately p square q minus v square by x we can write this is the expressions for this converter for this converter expression is coming like this so this is the expression for what this is the expression of a we can draw a circle with this so we have drawn a circle over there right see this is a axis this y axis uh, uh, is a p and this is x uh, sorry q this is positive q this is negative q positive p negative p so uh, this is the fourth quadrant operations and say there is some converter coordinate is over here it is operating at that point so at that point how it is operating actually if you see here the p is minus and q is plus right p is minus q is plus so q plus means what whatever you have seen q plus means inductive power supplied by line it is minus converter supplies to line so at that point the converter supplies to line p but it is receiving q right it is receiving q so you can change the alpha the alpha can rotate right so the point some point may be here 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 see if you the point is coming over here the p is positive so p is positive means what the line is going to supply your converter not converter is going to supply your line it is changing why because alpha now you have a luxury of your converter to change this alpha and this x because it is operating as a inductor capacitor inverter rectifier and with controllable angle so you have a, you have a, see this this one line delivers p uh, line delivers p means what means your common coupling power your grid is supplying to your converter over here your give grid is receiving from your converter so uh, your operation may be possible here 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 everywhere right and your operation may be possible here also you have a circle like this here also your origin may be over here at that time so at that time what is converter is doing suppose this point is here in the origin the converter is doing what This is a full mode of operation means what? Full mode of operation means it is receiving, delivering, inductor, capacitor, everything is there. Huh? Receiving, delivering means what? It is simultaneously receiving P, simultaneously giving Q. But it is operating at that point. So when it is operating at that point, uh, how it is acting? It is acting nothing actually. It is just there, but it is not delivering. It is not acting as an inductor, not acting as a capacitor. It is not delivering P, not receiving P, not delivering Q, not receiving Q. But it is acting there. 
so that is the circle diagram so to make you understood the power exchange between your converter and your grid so that is a very much flexible unless we have seen the variable impedance it is very much flexible it can be a pure inductor pure capacitor right or it can be a source right synchronous generator in a synchronous generator you have a control of your p and q both isn't it because if you if you look carefully uh, for the hydro stations you look at uh, you can change the speed you can change the flux yeah, both is possible here also both is possible because change of speed means p and change of flux means q the q has a range this is the q has a range this side totally inductive q and this side totally capacitive q so it is acting as a synchronous generator nothing else and you have a flexibility so how much the magnitude should be there so uh, this is the summary of that uh, uh, receiving uh, p and q and this is the summary of earlier figure in the uh, circle right in the circle i can see over here if you see the points the red line actually this is view pro from your grid side this is view from your grid side now that view the red is one word uh, grid is giving to your converter hmm. either our what is the theme the theme is to improve the quality to improve the quality you need to receive from your converter what type of receiving if you receiving uh, the your main agenda is what you should receive a capacitive current it should be acting as a capacitor the first thing is that if in addition if it is giving the active power that is additional hmm, that is additional but over here you see uh, uh, it is operating all things so red line actually why i have given kept this red line uh, red color because it is giving from the grid side grid side need to supply this p grid side need to supply the q hmm, that is not desirable so desirable is what that type this one this zone right this zone in this zone your converter actually giving p to your grid so that's a p absorbed by grid q absorbed by grid hmm. and go to the second one over here the grid is going to supply to converter but it is receiving q that is also desirable right here grid uh, uh, your uh, converter is supplying to grid but grid need to supply the q okay so this is the full uh, four quadrant mode of operation for your converter that is a uh, bidirectional converter uh, you can uh, you can have a luxury uh, how you are going to operate it by controlling the alpha alpha control in your hand by changing your switching of your device so uh, the converter this is a few examples sorry a few examples for how converter is for pv it is kind of converter is required for storage converter is required for wind generation the dc is there now the variable uh, variable uh, uh, converter variable speed converter is there for uh, this dc and this is uh, pmsc there is also converter sticker this is just a block diagram for your pp and a storage system is given over there so converter is uh, playing a role over there and storage is playing a important role for your improvement of quality and uh, uh, this is all about your uh, coming from your uh, power quality to your variable impedance type then coming to your converter hmm? coming to your converter time is there Uh, so that is converter is playing a role to improve that one because while it is acting as a pure inductor you see at point five so it is sufficient so uh, uh, this uh, time may not permit to discuss this one this over here uh, I have taken a case study for a converter using uh, that is called instantaneous power theory uh, instantaneous power theory is a method. is a method to inter, uh, to integrate a converter with your grid there are so many methods if you see there is some synchronous reference frame theory method there is some uh, uh, power balance method there is so many controlling methods to interact uh, to integrate your converter with your grid mm. there is so many uh, research is going on on that that uh, which technology you are going to connect for what purposes mm. to address what to address the power quality also to interface your grid to connect your storage all these things so uh, 
uh, I'll conclude up to over here. So this is one method, uh, instituted power theory, where the contour complexity is uh, very much less. Hmm? Okay, that's all for this session. So I think. Uh, if any query, you can ask. If you have any query, you can ask. Because this is a very simple thing, whatever I discuss. This is known to all of you. Uh, because case studies, I still am uh, not able to come there. So, if the uh, switching converter part is not suited, you have used the adapter, then after that, uh, and then uh, that part you have used the uh, capacitor. So, why? That part, we need to use both of them and uh, in case we use uh, switching converter part. Switching converter part, uh, I am not getting your questions actually. Uh, uh, who is that on that circle? Yes. Circle. Oh. So you ask again, you ask again. What is the question? Where it's initially acting as an inductor, then the same is going for resistance and for capacitance, mm -hmm. 0 0.26, 0 0.26. 0 0.26. Oh, that is just a, that is to make you understood that how it is changing its behavior. Uh, behavior is changing, uh, who is, what we are going to change. The control variable is over here, what? The control variable is the angle, right? Angle. So, the angle means what? The flow of current, right? The flow of current means what? You have a IGBT. That IGBT, you have a control that how much it is going to be conduct, right? So conduction of IGBT actually decides the whole bulb conduction, isn't it? Whole bulb conduction. So if you are not allow any current to flow through this bulb, so ultimately current will go to the parallel diode. So yeah. if the diode is going to conduct, ultimately what diode you don't have any control, huh? so it will take the current from AC side to DC side. Hmm. So that's why I have gone earlier. This is a two machine model. You think that is a two generator? Uh, either side of current flow can be possible. Uh, so if you if you control that IGBT, so you can control actually whole current directions. So ultimately the operations how it is operating, operation will decide the flow of current direction. Uh, you are probably saying uh, This part of it, right? This part. So that is same thing. Whatever I have discussed last, uh, during that whole conductions, the power flow, active power, reactive power, both flow is possible. Uh, ultimately, that is decided by that uh, IGBT switch. Mm, nobody else. So at what exact time you need to switch on, it depends your control panel. Mm, so that's why uh, I am going to that different types of controlling. How to control that converter? For depends on your applications, which application you require. Because simultaneously you don't require uh, uh, that mode. P sometimes P sometimes coming from the grid, and Q sometimes coming from that. That is you know de uh, decides when I mean, it's not designed. Because if you are designing that, ultimately the grid need to supply that Q to the converter. So that we don't require. Sir, uh, how to generalize the How to? Ultimately, ultimately, that is a what? That is a current waveform is problem, right? Impulsive means there is some impulse in the current. So they are actually coming in the part of a distortion, isn't it? This is a part of a distortion. That is, uh, if you say the reactive VI sine phi, it is not like that. It is different. So at that time, you need to have a, some control or filter mechanism. You need to extract the fundamental one from the whole one. This is a whole current fundamental, and your distortion is there. So anyhow, you need to take so extract the fundamental one. If you take extract the fundamental one, automatically the distortion will come out. So that distortion will be 
your reference for your converter. So, sir, uh, how we uh, channel IG? Please. You at that time you require a control circuitry for that. Control circuitry means see this is a two things. One thing is a fundamental one. Fundamental one, another is a reactive one. So the distortion part is coming in reactive part. So ultimately over here is the current is the main thing. You need to measure the current. You need to measure the current, and there are some so many control techniques. How you uh, this means uh, deviate means how you uh, extract the distortion part from the uh, total current. So if you distort uh, mainly people doing what mainly people it is better to have a extraction of fundamental one because you know. In the grid side, there's a fundamental is running. So you take the reference of the grid, and fundamental will come from the total one. The fundamental you extract automatically, uh, distortion will be remain there. So you take these distortions and apply to your control circuitry to generate your reference uh, uh, signals. That is the method, whatever I know. Sir, in your fourth floor, uh, in DSP lab, uh, we have also inverters. They are uh, it's always produce a noise. What is the reason behind uh, that noise in inverter? Oh, in inverter, that noise, uh, that noise, I don't know why. That noise. What is the inverter you see? Sir. And that is UPS. He is talking about UPS. He is talking about UPS. That UPS noise, there is a malfunction is happening in control. It's control circuit, maybe I don't know the situation, exact reason for that. You are hearing some humming sound. No, not humming sound. He is telling about the UPS. Sir, Always continuous. There is some noise there. Produce noise, sir. Sound. There is sound. Huge yes, sound. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is not from your uh, our so, uh, supply side and all these things. That is in in Six. build problem Six. for that in, in UPS. So many electronic devices are there. Right? Device. Electronic devices are creating the problem. Quality. It is in, in its circuits itself problem. Got my point? Its circuits is also some problem. If electronic devices are there, always there will be power quality. Now, sir, he is telling about that oh. particular UPS, which uh, continuously sounding, very huge sound is there. So it is its uh, its inbuilt circuitry has some problem. Sir, uh, normal UPS is there. There is a very mild noise, uh, humming noise. If it is a 10 kV, then very huge noise. Yeah. Also, there they might be vibrating. You can check. No, sir, I understood because I heard that noise. No, yeah. Because a continuous heavy sound. So, then the fast noise is of the best. The question is self and the self. We find out why there is a problem. Okay, any other questions? Because I didn't discuss any hard thing, very few, very easier thing, right? Okay, then thank you. Okay, so thank you, Professor Kathari, for such a nice lecture. And please, now I request my colleague, Dr. Vikram Das. He will be mentor to Professor Kathari. Oh, wow. <laughs>